Here's part two of our interview with Nick Hall, the general manager of the Fredericksburg Nationals baseball team. So do you have you had things that you've seen that maybe uh, bring the attendance above what your average attendance would be for that night? So like, is there a certain, there's, what are some of the things that have just been super home runs that have really bucked any attendance trends? I mean, it, it's definitely, and this is not a secret in the minor league baseball world, it's fireworks. Fireworks, people come out for fireworks from all over. Uh, that's not necessarily a secret. If you go to any market that has a minor league baseball team, there is one night a week that odds are they're shooting fireworks, and I would be willing to bet that's their highest attended uh, attended game for that week. Yeah. Uh, that's for sure. That's for sure. I think that was the same back in Jackson. Uh, that wasn't Jackson inventing the wheel or any anything like that. That is just the nature of it. I mean, we are human, and we love to watch stuff blow up. It, it's it's just you know, it's no, no argument it. here. <laughs> Um, and you mentioned your mascot a minute ago. I did want to bring him up because it's kind of an oddball mascot. Uh, a little bit, and I don't know if does this does he predate Gritty? Uh, he does statistically, yeah. I mean, so our mascot is Gus. Uh, Gus is George Washington's childhood imaginary friend. So okay. Gus has been here the whole time. When George went off to fight for our independence in the Revolutionary War, um, he did bring Gus with him. Um, Gus was there the whole time. If you zoom in enough at the painting of George Washington sailing across the de- the, de- uh, the Delaware, and you hold it up, you know, like National Treasure, you're going to need the lemon, all that kind of stuff, and you do all of that, you're going to see Gus standing right there behind him. Uh, Gus was there, Gus, uh, uh, naturally, naturally. Uh, Gus was there the whole time. Gus was there the whole time. So, it... People should. We'll put a picture of Gus up on the screen here or something, because uh, Gus is kind of an odd-looking character. Gus is um, what so what we call in the industry nightmare fuel. Well, I uh, r- originally wrote in this question your horrifying mascot, but I changed it to oddball mascot. Uh, and my kids walked in when I was getting prepped for this episode, and I had a picture of Gritty on the screen. Uh, and Gritty from the Philadelphia Flyers is obviously. They're in the same mold in together. Gritty, it would be, it would be going away from Gus's backstory. Uh, Gritty is a huge part of the inspiration of Gus. Sure, uh, there's no doubt about that. And it's just, it's just so uh, stereotype shattering. Um, and so, ha- what was the thought process? And then, how do you guys use Gus on a regular basis to help promote the team? For sure. So, uh, the thought process of Gus was 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 twofold. For the longest amount of time, everybody figured that George Washington was going to be our mascot. For obvious sure. reasons, George is from here. But let me tell you, when we when we really did a deep dive on this, this was brought up to me, and I just sat there and I was like, we're flirting with disaster by doing that. Because let me point out some things. What are the funniest things that a mascot does? One of them is dancing. Yeah, they're, they're self-deprecating generally. Yeah, self-deprecating. When... What would we have done when George Washington got up and, and sh- shook his booty at the crowd? Yeah, 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 yeah. It, it's, it, it, it's you had a George it's Washington different. mascot twerking. Yes, it's over. Like you it, might be it, on the it, front it, page of Fox News. A hundred percent, because people around here, like everybody knows George Washington. People out around here eat, breathe, and sleep George Washington, though. Uh, this is the, He means so much to this community. It, it's the branded throughout this community. So if we do one thing that's not... I mean, not even talking inappropriate, but let's go one thing that's not historically accurate that George Washington himself wouldn't have done. I mean, you're, you're talking about knocking over a kid's popcorn. Well, not George Washington. He would never stoop that low. So you see, you see what I'm saying? Like we, so that was the first thing that were like this realization that like, hey, the most obvious thing is probably our absolute worst thing that we could do for this community um, is make George Washington a... Uh, 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 a actual character that's out here now he is a character that's out here uh, because him and his mother both being from this area we do a race every single day uh, every single game and it is a uh, a mother son race relay race and so they come out for that and then they send autographs and then George is put away and for the exact reasons that I just mentioned you have to be careful with that image um, so the next thing was well what are we gonna do so we looked around the around all of sports to find the perfect mascot and, and and gritty was a big part of that and so was blue from the indianapolis colts if you ever get a chance well, to he's a up. horse yeah. though or he's, a, a horse. he's a horse and for a while when we first came up with the idea it was going to be george washington's horse until we found out 
the literal mascot that we thought up is currently being used by the Indianapolis Colts. So that was, you know, that was that, that also brought on another layer. So, you know, the the Gus gets the cut of his shirt from Winnie the Pooh. We we thought it was funny to make the 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 mascot show off that belly even more. Um, the tail of Gus, um, if you notice, looks like a little dinosaur tail. The reason for that, which you might not know, is about 30 minutes from here, the largest dinosaur fossil in the United States was found. Kind of neat. So we're like, yeah, let's make him a dinosaur. Um, but then we realize, you know, he's got to have a mullet. Why? Well, that actually has no significance to the area. We just feel as though Gus would want a mullet. So, you know, it's, it's also stuff like that to be able to help us out and make that work. So um, after going through the process, we ended up with Gus. And, you know, there was some definite hesitation. But the great thing about him being so crazy is that everybody immediately was like, okay, that's pretty awesome. Because uh, the, the, other, the other thing, you know, when, when opening up one of the criticisms that we got as an organization is um, the – creativity that went into the naming of the team and what i mean by that is minor league baseball is known for zany names i came from amarillo just talked about amarillo we have the sod poodles and it's a oh, yeah. text I, nickname I drove past people. the trash panda stadium on trash Friday. pandas absolutely so you have these the, I, I, akron is the rubber ducks so i mean you have you have these great great brand names that are like off the wall but yet we went with washington the fredericksburg nationals um that is too full. 45 minutes away from Washington, that means a lot to our fans. There's so much pride in being an affiliate of the Nationals. When we first opened, we were coming off of a World Series victory. So there was so much pride in that. It was so important to keep that branding. So we had to set ourselves up for kind of, if you will, that weird and zaniness. We had to bring that in other ways other than with the actual baseline brand. And so we were able to do that with Gus, and, and, and honestly, it, it's been such a tremendous success. He is he is definitely the wild card of the stadium. Well, if you do rebrand, the Fredericksburg Imaginary Friends sounds like a pretty fun minor league team name. I love that. I love that. <laughs> um, and then, uh, so let's talk about marketing and sales real quick. So a lot of your career has been built on selling sponsorships and partnerships. and talk. So can you talk about your thought process when you come to that? Yeah, for sure. So, I mean, uh, when we talk about partnerships, talk about corporate sponsorships, uh, we are talking about marketing inside of a baseball stadium. And, you know, the, num the number one thing that I love to talk about is sponsoring and partnering with live events. I could talk for hours about what it could do for your business, but when it boils down to it, you have a captive audience. You have them for, you know, three hours, hopefully now two and a half, shout out to the pitch clock, but uh, you have a captive audience for two and a half hours. There is no muting. There's no rewinding, fast forwarding. There's no pausing. That message is there. Um, so if you, it's so important though, you can't have a commercial. You have to find a way to creatively brand what we're doing from an entertainment standpoint so that you link that brand subconsciously. You, you're linking your brand with having a good time. If we were to just run commercials, it's just gonna fade into the background. Uh, but it's it's important to 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 be able to link something so important to a community, to link a having a great time and link your brand and your messaging all together. You mix those three three things together, your brand's image throughout a community or wherever that may be is immediately changing in a positive way. Um, and so that is essentially my entire career up until this point is based off of those those partnerships and, and creating those subconscious links to a brand and what we do uh, and what we and how we are able to serve our communities. Um, can you talk about some of the oddest partnerships that you've done? Like what's something that's turned out to, like just kind of a weird connection or like a weird thing that they wanted to sponsor? Oh, I have so many. And yeah, there's there's been a lot. And there's some that I've had to say that I have had to turn down as well. Um, for instance, you do have to remember there's still baseball going on. So like depending on what's going on, there are some lines that can't be towed, such as I have had people want to sponsor the other team when they get hit by a pitch. I can't <laughs> remember. <laughs> the injury lawyer. Um, and although funny and great, there is a chance when that happens, somebody could get hurt yeah. on the field. And sure. that now yeah. makes you the bad guy. Uh, you, so you know, you know what I'm saying? So you have to kind of be able to think about those kind of things. That is one of the ones that I think 
I, that was one of my favorites. One of my favorites that I have done, um, I'm going to go all the way back to Jackson. Um, and it was uh, Bird and Bird Associates, a law firm in Tennessee. Um, we did a Birdmobile water delivery to umpires once a game. And we got an intern to dress as a giant chicken and drive out in a little VW remote control child's car. And so this chicken is three times the size of this car. And he just rode this little bird, and we called it the Birdmobile. And the Birdmobile would ride out to an umpire, and he'd handle a bottle of water, and then he'd ride off He'd ride off on this little bird. And it was just hysterical. There was quite literally one time that it did, I mean, the, the, it was probably rated for, what, 50, 75 pounds, something like that. And this 150-pound gentleman was, was riding in this thing. And, and there was one time that it just broke on the way back. And we did not know what to do. And four of the promotional squad folks sprinted out there. And this was not scripted. And it was the funniest thing I've ever been a part of. And each of them picked up both the bird and the mobile at the same time and carted it off like it was a stretcher. You know, so I mean, like, it, it, it's, it's that kind of stuff. It's trying to find, can you find a way to link your brand in a way that, that furthers the entertainment that the stadium is providing? Um, and so there's, there's... I could probably talk for an hour on the some of the weirdest things that we've done. I've had a funeral home sponsor the visiting team's lineup announcement, and it was the it, it was called it, the the catchphrase was the Fred Nats will beat them and we'll bury them. Um, so I mean, you know, it, it's you know, it, it's it's funny stuff like that. It is coming up with that creativity to link the two. That it just mm -hmm. it just becomes everybody's favorite. Now, you're in a leadership role. You've been in a leadership role for a long time. And so can you talk about the the process of going from selling those things directly to having a team of people selling those things directly? Yeah, and, and so that is, yeah, I, I can't lie and say that that was the hardest part because, you know, when that's, when you are concentrated in one avenue, it kind of becomes your baby, right? It kind of, it kind of, kind of becomes your baby. So to give up control over that, is is a difficult avenue to be in but at the same time then you have everybody else's department is now starting to come to you and there's just this realization that you know I, you're just not going to be able to hyper focus on that one thing um and so it, it, it would it would it would be a lie to say oh you know that's just the hat that you put on and it, it's an easy transition i mean it takes some time to be able to really be able to do that I will definitely say that there's plenty of times where I miss just being able to concentrate on one avenue. Oh my goodness, there's so many times that I would love to give up 90% of what I do and just go back to that for a whole week. Um, but uh, I would be lying to say that, it, that, that it, it was easy to do to make that transition. But it is a transition that if you're able to do, um, it, it, it's so positive. It, it's, so, it's so very positive. And, and, and part of that is having trust in the person you're giving it up to. I mean, that's a huge, that's a huge piece of it. And so you have to make sure that the, you have the right person in place to be able to take the reins from whatever that was. So, you know, thinking about that, that thought continued is like, you know, what, how do you approach leading that organization then? You talk about leading it from uh, the, the whole organization standpoint? Yeah. So, you know, for, for me, I, I like to think this too, because, you know, if, one cool thing about working for so many different managers is that you learn what you, you, you learn what you liked to work for, but you probably also had a few times where you learned, you know, I'm, I'm going to vow if I'm ever in that spot, not to do that one thing. Sure. Um, sure. And, and, and you know, it, it's, it's all obvious things, but when you're at the other end of it, sometimes you really learn like, Hey, that really does, make you feel bad the intent wasn't there to make you feel bad I, I i can almost guarantee the intent wasn't malicious but that doesn't feel great doing that and so one thing that i like to do is it, for better or for worse i know it's not everybody's cup of tea but i pretty much tell people look if you are coming to me with an issue and don't have a solution i want you to know that to me means you are handing the, your problem over to me wholly 
um, or communicate it that you need a little bit of help or whatever that may be. I love when somebody comes to me, they'll describe an entire problem, and a lot of times I'll just say it. I'll be like, hey, okay, great. Present a solution to me by tomorrow at 5 o'clock, and let, 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 let's make a decision. And they just kind of look at you, and I'm, and I'm like, I, 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 I can't solve that for you right now, but you can. Um, so that I, I think that that is like my, my biggest strength, I think, is that I really love to be able to give people the ability to come up with their own solutions and execute those solutions. And I think a big reason for that is one of the calling cards of a successful organization, and this is not just baseball or sports, this is anything, is buy-in. Buy-in towards the vision. And one way to get that buy-in is to actually give your staff uh, the, the ability and the feel that this is theirs, that this is fully theirs. That, to me, was the thing that I learned when I was given that, and I wasn't in a leadership role yet. It moved the needle for me in my career when I felt as though, oh, man, I have to make this work because they let me do it exactly how I wanted to do it. So I can't let it fail now. Yes, yeah, so it's I, you on know me. Because now it's on me. I, can't, I don't have anybody else to blame, so therefore I can't make, let this fail. When I realized that and then got into a manager role, I was like, you know what, I don't know, know if they meant to do that, but that was genius. And so that's one of the things that I like to do is, is if you have a department under me, I'm going to ask you, okay, well, how, how do you want to do it? I know what I want the results to be, but how, how do you want to get there? Um, and so that, I, I think that that's a, that's a I, I like to think that that's a strength of mine that I let yeah. everybody, you know, come up with their own plans and present them. All right. Well, Nick, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, if someone is in the West, uh, in, not in the West Virginia, in the Virginia, D.C. area, what uh, season runs along with the MLB season? Uh, see, exactly with it. Exactly with it. We are, Opening day is April 7th. Okay. Well, we uh, thank you for taking the time, Nick. It's nice to talk to you again, and uh, good luck with this season of the Nationals. Absolutely. Thank you, Kevin, so much. Thank you for having me. Thank you all for checking out the Content Machine podcast. If you found this helpful, please be sure to subscribe, and if you are a baseball fan, make your way to Fredericksburg to check out a game at the uh, Fredericksburg Nationals.